Hey YouTube, welcome back. You're watching Outdoors with Craig DZ. Thanks for tuning in today. Today I'm gonna discuss an issue that I ran into. Uh, there's probably a lot of you guys out there that are also having similar issues to me. And uh, I'm gonna show you a way to solve it. Stay tuned. All right, so here is my rig. And if you're paying attention, you'll probably be able to spot the difference. Um, so basically the the issue that I've been having or that I noticed initially so I brought this guy into the shop um, had to replace pads all the way around um, one caliper up front was hanging up which is why I brought it in but when they looked at it there was a second one that was also sticking um, so I needed a decent amount of brake work but besides that <clears throat> I've had some of recent some heavier loads one was some shingles in a 20 yard uh, that was I think just over five ton and on those loads the truck pulled and handled it fine the braking on the trailer worked fine however going down the road you would think I was pulling five ton you know and uh, for any of you that have to deal with DOT have DOT stickers uh, have to worry about that stuff um, you know it's not a good look to see your truck squatting so my issue was and I'll give you a hint right now, was suspension. So this is the airlift um, system. And again, this video is not sponsored by them. I found them uh, doing my own due diligence and, and research. So uh, airlift is a company, they make airbags. And you can literally hear the truck slowly squatting back down now this is an empty trailer or shouldn't say empty empty container but it's not very heavy um, so you can hear the suspension kind of squeaking back down in the more of the ball um, here but so this system itself it doesn't ever go to zero so like that accordingly and I got to do some research because I got to read this uh, like Right now it says it's on 0.3, which I think is 0.3 pounds, but the most I've only ever run in this is like six pounds. The difference with those airbags have been night and day. Um, so, you know, you watch, they have a video I think on YouTube and there's other people that talk about towing. So, and that's only with my goose. I have not pulled anything really with weight in my dump trailer. So this video and this system, I mean, could be for anybody if you're towing dump trailers, towing dumpsters, landscaping trailers, I mean, any trailers in general. So I have a F-250, right, three quarter ton, and it gets the job done. It has plenty of power. The tow rating on this thing, gooseneck wise, is like 33,000 pounds. However, the suspension on it can't really handle 33,000 pounds. I mean, if and there's you know you got to think a lot of this weight is on those two axles in the trailer itself so there's not a ton of weight on the truck however things factors to think about that go into it right how how are things loaded right if it's front heavy then yeah there might actually be a decent amount of weight on the tongue on the goose because it's not evenly distributed on the axles same way you know if it's too far back and then with overweight, the more I looked into it with the suspension sagging in it, to me it was getting to the point where, and, and this thing, I, I mean, is hooked up all the time now for me. I mean, this, the gooseneck, it's either the gooseneck, which is on probably five or six days a week, and then my dump trailer would be like that other day. It's very rare now that I don't have anything hooked to this thing. Um, and it's primarily 98% work at this point with this truck, but, when I was not using the truck for work and there was nothing on it, I mean, the ass end was actually starting to sag and you could notice it. Um, so now, let me flip this around. So now, I mean, this is with it with minimal pressure. So the, the system, and I'll show you guys in a second. So I opt it and there's two, you know, different options. Uh, I, I can tell you right now, zoom in and show you. So like, here is the one at airbag. Um, 
So you can get just the airbags themselves. These are like the 5000 series. I didn't opt for, there's another, it's like the ultimate and it's the next step up. It has stainless steel hoses. I didn't opt for that just because I wasn't sure how well I was gonna like them. And then I figured like with the nylon uh, hose, I mean, if you have an issue, you can always cut it. That stuff's dirt cheap to replace. So I was like, meh, you know, spend the extra money and like if you do have an issue right it's gonna be a pain in the ass or you could go with the nylon stuff and cut it to length it doesn't matter if it's too long too short right you can always buy that stuff um but you can get just the kit and then basically the kit itself has um a t either a t you can use or you can do individual sides but it's a little uh, like a tire inflator valve, you know, air valve that you can literally just inflate yourself with any type of portable compressor or your, you know, regular compressor and you can add whatever pressure you want. So like you don't, that kit itself is 300 bucks, super, super cheap, super affordable. I opted to get the onboard air, which gives you this remote. It also, I have to double check. I don't really care. Like I don't need it. Um, you can also have the app. They make an app for it, which I honestly, I don't know if my kit has it or not, or if I, that was the difference, part of the difference between the next one, but the compressor was like 330 itself too. Um, the compressor itself was about 330 uh, plus tax and all. Uh, I bought it on Amazon, everything, two day shipping. I got it last week and then this this weekend was pretty hot but i still still managed to get it done um but the compressor that i got didn't come with like there's a mounting bracket and the valve and compressor are together in one bracket and it, it supposedly saves you some time um i mean the compressor wiring it up hooking everything i mean maybe took me an hour the actual bags took more like an hour and a half probably closer to two it was just a little bit more assembly and then making sure things fit right and you had to jack up the truck and so forth but wow what i'm telling you what a difference between it so just putting i mean when i first had it i literally only added like one psi or one pound of pressure using this and just the ride difference was night and day i didn't have anything on it at that point but just adding that little bit of cushion in it hitting bumps and if you have a probably a f-250 f-350 or something comparable you know chevy dodge for mine my truck my f-250 rides like crap um when it doesn't have a load on it like when i'm towing a trailer it actually rides better suspension wise i think because it would actually leaf springs everything would give a little bit because they're rated right for a little bit of weight so empty it's super stiff so this kind of take takes that out and then the other benefits of having this right is now that your truck rides level so let me show you this you know and so this is these tires if you've been following along um i put these tires on a uh, month and a half ago so i mean these are venoms they're they're all terrain tires they're pretty aggressive but i mean there's not, these are, these were what were on the rears. So I just rotated them. I have less than 2000 miles on these things, maybe 1500. And you know, they're below 50% tread. If I show you the rears now, right? These were the fronts and you can see obviously way more tread, but even the fronts, you know, are fairly worn. Um, they're probably, these are probably 75. So if I had to guess, right? I'm pretty good with math you know they're like 50 40 these are 75 by next month you know they sh they're going to be matching or they would be at the current wear rate that i was having so that was one problem um, but when you research you know your truck sagging and all the weight kind of bringing it down you'll see things they talk about is tire wear they wear on even because all the weight right is starting to like drag down the back end and your front end's actually lifting up slightly so you don't really have the best traction anymore in the front which means you know they don't really wear um you know instead of the weight kind of evenly being distributed along your entire truck it just slammed right down either on your axle or if you're bumper pulling same thing just on the bumper pulling it all on the rear axle so 
<clears throat> it's supposed to help with tire wear, uh, so we will see. The other uh, benefits, right, is like trailer sway. Obviously, depending on your trailer and the weight, once, you know, my trailer right now is pretty level. Um, and the gooseneck, not so much, but the bumper pull, I definitely experienced it, where once you put it on, you know, your ass end drops, the tongue of the trailer drops, and now the front's actually pitched down, and depending on how it's loaded, you know, now you have this weird pivot point where the weight, everything's like in the middle up front, and it causes your trailer to sway back and forth and, you know, can put you into a pretty dangerous situation depending if you're towing on the highway or not. Um, and then other issues I had, so like originally I bought, I mean, my truck is, is pretty tall. The F-250 is pretty tall stock, and I just have a, a leveling kit on it. Um, but I bought this hitch. It was the uh, Bulletproof drop hitch. I think it's an 8-inch. I, I can't remember uh, if it's 6 or 8. I think it's 8. But the kit itself, the problem, I mean, you can see already, I mean, I'm not, I'll get a tape measure here, but there's maybe 6 inches between the ground. So when you're backing into somebody's driveway and there's a slope either up or down, you constantly have to worry about bottoming, bottoming out. And I've had to either rotate this upside down um, or like now I don't need it technically, right? Cause I have the gooseneck. So I would just take it off completely backing in to make sure I don't damage somebody's, somebody's driveway. But now, um, I'll measure it and I'll, and I'll show you guys the difference. I'm gonna take two measurements. Nobody laugh at me too hard because my broke ass tape measure here. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. One broke that I just grabbed and then I have two I can't find. So right now we'll go to the top of the hitch. If it focuses there. It's just, it's like 16 and three quarters. Um, for the hitch. All right, we'll go to the crease and that's just about, just about 10 on the crease. So before I do anything else, I'll drop down here on my frame and just show you. I still have to zip tie a couple things and cut some zip ties. But so here is the valve controller. Um, there, so this is the air in from the compressor. This is the air out that feeds them. And then this little clamshell thing is the compressor itself. Um, right now I do not have it wired up to the battery or uh, to the ignition. There is a ignition wire that you can kind of run it, turn it on and off um, when, you know, as your vehicle's running. It also has built-in sensors. So like if it doesn't detect activity, it won't actually run. Um, but so I'll turn, turn this on and it's fairly quick. So now it's on point three. This is my preset button to six. So you can hear it. I can visually see it going up already. Even at first glance, I mean, look how much space is in the wheel well now. Same with underneath this thing. So, I mean, it's sitting normal height again. I'll have to watch the video again. I think, right, this was just at 17, I believe. And so now it's, you know, I think it was 16 and three quarters, right? So now it's like 20. And almost a quarter so three and a half inches difference between just my actual hitch on the ground and then if we do yeah this to the crease is just slightly over 12 so two inch difference in the wheel well um, so man, yeah, what a difference. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we are getting pretty close to our 1,000 subscribers. So in a reinvestment to my YouTube channel as part of 
basically reaching 1,000 subscribers, right, which was a goal of mine this year. Um, I'm gonna reinvest some some of my own personal money into the channel. Um, going to be purchasing some some new video equipment, something a little higher quality. Like I I don't I can't do 4K with this camera, and then really going to start uh, hopefully increasing the quality of my videos uh, to keep you guys um, entertained and enjoying the channel so i appreciate everybody's support if you haven't already smash the subscribe button um, might do a thousand sub giveaway not sure yet i gotta think about it uh, probably but i gotta think of what i want to do uh, thank you again for your support and again if you're looking for questions around dumpsters help with your business advertising um, copy of my contract send me an email uh emails down in the description and uh happy to help out and uh, stay tuned for more later